Now, the bank account is also a very important account you must set up because there is no how you can run a business without a bank. You can't make a payment if you don't have a bank account. You can't receive a payment if you don't have a bank account. So bank account is something that is very, very important if you must use this account system very well and track your report. Now, to add your bank account to this system, there are two things you're going to do. We're going to add the account in Naira. We'll add the account in dollars. So let's see how to add the bank account. You go to list, chart of accounts. When you select chart of accounts, you right click. If you don't right click, you can come to this place, accounts, then new. They are the same thing. When you click new, to take you to this section here. So this is where you select your bank. Let me try it again. You can see chart of accounts, accounts, new. You select the bank, which is what you want to add. Then you click continue. Now when you click continue, a new window will pop up. This is where you now enter your bank accounts. Assuming you have an account with Diamond Bank. Now let's look at what we have here. From this section here, we can see that we have different bank accounts. We have Diamond Bank, Diamond Bank Dollars, Diamond Bank Loan Collection, Access Bank and all that. So let's see. I'm going to set up Diamond Bank in Naira and in Dollars. Now the first one is Naira. So I will enter Diamond Bank. This is the one in Naira. So you can see the currency is in Naira. We will leave it. You will now see enter opening balance. The opening balance here is as at the end of 216. So the opening balance we have here is 2450403. Statement ending date. This will be what? As at the end of 216. So you click this, you go back, which will now be 31st of December 2016. You click OK. Then you click Save and Close. You can enter another information here, description, maybe Diamond Bank, so so or Diamond Bank in Naira and all that. Now, so we say what of bank account number? We have it here too. These are optional. Then you routine number basically is not really a must, it's optional. Routine number is like if someone wants to pay you, there are times when you want to receive money and you ask of some either route number or swift code. So they are not really a must. What you just need to enter here is just the bank name, the currency, and the opening balance. If you want to state the bank account number, you can go on to enter the bank account number. Then you click save and close. Now, you see this transaction is more than 90 days because we are bad dating. System knows what today's date is, but it's looking at us like, oh, we are entering a bad date transaction. You can click yes to close it. Now, another important area that, please, I want someone to remind me at the end of this is what we call closing dates. If I enter my balance as at the end of 216, I may want to lock the transaction, and I don't want another person to access it again. So someone wants to go there to alter it, so I can close that transaction, which means if anybody is entering a transaction before 2016, I can close that transaction. So that is for closing dates. Here I will click yes to tell the system that I'm aware that I am entering I'm, I'm entering a back the transaction. This is the code here. When I close the day, that means if anybody is entering a transaction before 2016 or 2016, system will not allow the person. It's closing the person off. You understand? The reason is that you don't want someone, it's not like if you are closing your book for the year. And you don't want someone to go and be entering the transaction again. So you can close your transaction for that year. So nobody can go back to that time except the admin who has the right to do that and knows the password. Even the admin, before you do that, you need to enter your password. So yeah, I will click yes. I have saved it. You can see Diamond Bank. This is the figure here. So if I go to my reports and I check my balance sheet from this section here, you will see now, you see Diamond Bank this figure. So as we are entering it, you will see how it will be building up. You can see that little transaction we have entered, see the way our balance sheet is looking and all that. So you can, I can even change this name to statement of financial position and all that. I will show us how to customize the heading. So this is how to enter your bank account in Naira. Let's add the bank account in dollars. If you don't want to go through list, this list, chart of accounts, you can use the shortcut and select chart of accounts directly. Here. When you select it directly, you go to account, new, you select your bank, you click continue. Now the next 
when we are entering is Diamond Bank US dollar. That the one first one was in Naira. So we'll enter Diamond Bank. Diamond Bank. Then the currency is dollars. So I'll come here and I'll select my dollars. If I select my dollars, you need to know the exchange rate as at the end of 2016. Because that is what the system will use to multiply the value in dollars to report in your home currency, which so, is Naira. So, so the beginning and the mid, those in between will mm. not matter. It will not matter. Yes, it's the ending balance. Then the transaction will be from 1st of January 2017 downwards. That's why what you need to do for your setup is your balance sheet item. So here, we will now select dollar, we will now enter the opening balance. Then what is the opening balance here? We have 154. Now this 154 we are seeing here is the Naira equivalent of here. So let's assume that our, this thing, uh, our, our dollar value is 1 million dollars. So our exchange rate is 154. So here we will enter 100, Statement end date. Thirty first of December two sixteen. Now, what is our exchange rate as at thirty first of December two sixteen? If it's one fifty four, we we'll enter one fifty four naira here. So what this means is that the exchange rate of naira dollar against naira as at the end of two thousand sixteen is one fifty four, and as at that period we have one million dollars. So which means what we now report in our account is one hundred fifty four million. So I will click OK. Save and close. The name is already used. Let me put enter your name already used because you cannot use two the same two the same uh, two same names. You just enter USD to differentiate the two. Then you okay. click save and close. The same thing again. Transaction is more than 90 days because you are entering it backward. You click yes. If you click yes, okay. So you can see the system is report. This is a dollar value here. US dollar. Then if I go to my report and I check my balance sheet here, you can see what the system is reporting here. 154 million naira. Because it's multiplying 154 times 1 million. Now as the exchange rate changes every day, this balance will also be changing. Yes. Now let me explain two very important reports that changes in exchange rate we create. Now, first one is what we call unrealized gain or loss. What does that mean? I started my balance, uh, my bank with 154 naira, and I had 1 million naira, 1 million dollars, which is 154. Assuming exchange rate now increase to 200, that means 1 dollar is now 200 naira. Do you know how made again? 154. You understand? Because what I now have in naira in my USD will now be 200 million. So difference between 154 million and 200 million is unrealized profits. Now, assuming exchange rates reduce to 150, what I now have in my account will now be 150 million, which means I have lost 4 million. So that's unrealized loss. So profit or loss that arise as a result of changes in the value in your bank account, which is your dollar account, gives rise to unrealized profit or unrealized loss because for me to have 154 million at the beginning and now you're telling me exchange rate is 150 that means i've lost 4 million mm -hmm. and this is what actually happens to some companies that's unrealized gain or loss let's ex explain the other scenario we have what we call exchange rate gain or loss they are different this one is for changes in your bank account now another one that happened that happened that um affect most business mostly in Nigeria is on exchange rate gain or loss, like the one of this alert. You went to request for a loan of one, okay, let's use this one now. You went to request for a loan of $1 million from a bank. And that Naira value, as at the end of 2016, was $154 million. That's the loan. And bank is now telling you, you need to pay back the loan in dollars. Now, in paying back this loan in dollars, we now look at our exchange rate, and we now see that exchange rate now is now 350. Do you know how much you expected to pay back? 350 million. But what I collected initially was 154 million. Automatically, you've made a loss. Because the value of dollar as at when you enter that transaction is no longer the same as at when you are settling that transaction. 
So you need to pay for that. So because of that, a lot of companies may not be able to pay their debt in dollars. Because exchange rate assets, when they enter that transaction, is now higher. It's not lower than what it is now. It's different. But it would have really given rise to profits if the exchange rate has reduced. I collected a loan when it was 154. Now that I'm paying back, it's now 100 naira to a dollar. Men have made a profit of 54 million. Which means it should be easier for me to pay back the loan and all that. So that's what exchange rate does. Now, and QuickBooks is going to report it properly. Now, in that transaction entry, we'll see how to create that exchange rate profit or loss, unrealized gain or loss. All this has already been designed in the system. All you need to do is just enter the transaction, enter the exchange rate. System will be comparing the exchange rate against what the is previous the one. What of uh, exchange loss or gain mm. to an uh, unrealized gain of profit to the account? Okay, it will hit your P and L. It's going to affect your profits. Exchange gain will exchange go to both, balance sheet. Yes, balance, balance sheet item. Unrealized loss is profit. Profit and loss, yes. yes. So that's for setting up your bank. So any question on how to add your bank in Naira and in dollars? Because they are all the same. Because the next one I'm going to discuss now is what if we now have multiple accounts in a bank? Because in some businesses it's possible. You have a current account, you have a savings account, account. and all that. So how do you combine them together? So let's use Assets Bank as a case study. The first thing you need to do is you need to add the bank first. So you go to home, you select chart of accounts. You want to add current account and savings account in Access Bank. This is the first thing you need to do. When you come to chart of accounts, you select new. Then you, you select account, new. When you select new, you select your bank. You click continue. Just the way we add our bank. Now the account we are adding is Access Bank. So you enter Access Bank. Now, when you are entering Access Bank, you don't need to enter the balance. Just leave the balance like this. You click Save and Close. Now, we've added Access Bank. This is the zero error. The first account we have in Access Bank is Savings Account. This is how to add your Savings Account. You come to Account. You click New. You select the bank. Continue. Account name, you enter savings account. Which bank do we have that savings account? Access bank. You now select a sub account of Access bank. Savings account under Access bank. How much do we have in our savings account? You enter it here. Statement ending date, as at 31st December 2016. So you enter it. You click OK. Then you click save and close. So you can see the first account has been added to Access Bank. We will now add the second account. Look at what will happen. System will add the money you have in both savings and current accounts to give you total of what we have in Access Bank. So here you go to Accounts, New, Bank, Continue. So Accounts, you now have Current. It will be a sub account because it's under Access Bank. You select Access Bank here. You enter the balance. So if we had 250, statement any day, the same date too. You can see that I'm selecting the balances as at the end of 216. Okay. You click save and close. You click save here. Why do they not have account uh, type? Eh? Because if it is account uh, type, it will mm. have been uh, understandable. Yes, it will have been easier. Yeah, if, if this, you know, the account type because here. His account name, account name should have been. Somebody will say, how can a, a current be account name or savings be account name? Mm. A layman. Yes, yes. You know, the account type on this system is referring to the chart of account class. Chart whether it's an asset, whether it's a liability, whether it's an income, whether it's an expenses. So when you say account type on this system, it means chart of account. You can see here, type. Okay. So when you say account yeah. type, you're talking about is there an asset, is there a liability, right. is there a, so that's what the account yeah. type Correct. means here. So you can see now that we have 100,000 in savings account, 
250 million in current account. So the combination of these two will give us the total that we have in Access Bank. That's it, 250, 100. So it's adding both current and savings together. So this is how you add multiple accounts in the bank. Just group them together. But if those accounts are different currencies, you can't group them together. Because if here you can't say hundred thousand dollars, two fifty million, so you now say two hundred fifty one. It's not possible and it's not correct. So if it's two accounts, great, it's done. It's because of the internet. Mm -hmm. So now that is for bank accounts. Any question for bank accounts? Chibi, you give us the video. Sure. This video is your own. I'm not, I'm not doing it. This one is just. The reason I'm doing this video now is for you so that you can use it as reference.